Which yacht did I once present in my garden? And why should you care? Well, it seems like a lifetime ago, but actually it was just over two years ago that I was doing a whole load of videos for Benetti and they asked me to present their new project at the time, which was the Benetti Beyond. Then COVID hit and the only way that I could present my part to the camera was by doing it in my garden. Now my ex-wife's garden. Well, since then Benetti have done what Benetti do best. They've built a really good yacht and my friends at Super Yacht Times have provided me with some great information and some fantastic images of the finished yacht itself. I'll put a link to a Super Yacht Times video at the end of this video, but also I'll be very quickly giving some good tips to aspiring yacht brokers. Earlier this month, Italian shipyard Benetti unveiled Goya. This is the first Benetti beyond 37 meters at their Benetti shipyard in Livorno. With eight hulls now sold and due for delivery between 2022 and 2025, we take a close look at the hugely successful model and in particularly the freshly launched Goya. Now this 36 and a half meter motor yacht features a steel hull and an aluminium superstructure. It's an interesting and deliberate choice for a shipyard which often opts for fiberglass. The yacht's intended to reflect the history of the yacht builder, echoing the vessels of the 1950s when the shipyard pioneered the use of metal over wood. The Beyond 37 meter belongs to the Benetti Voyager series of explorer style yachts. And it was born from a vision by Azimut Benetti Group, founder and president Paolo Vitelli, and the designer Stefano Rigini. The yacht's naval architecture is by Ausonio Naval Architecture and the Benetti R&D department, and her hull is designed by Pierluigi Ausonio's firm, Plana. First announced in 2019, the Beyond 37 meter puts utility and privacy for guests at the front and center of this five deck yacht, and it has floor to ceiling windows as a main feature of the yacht's interior. It's offered with e-hybrid propulsion. The shipyards pioneered this with Siemens Marine Global Competence Center for this build using their SysShip EcoProp system, which guarantees low fuel consumption and a reduced impact on the environment. Now this system works with the auxiliary propulsion with electric engines working in parallel with the main diesel engines for quieter cruising and reduced emissions when it's in hotel mode. As far as the interiors are concerned, Goya features interior design from Benetti's in-house architect, Mauro Itzo, while the design firm Giorgetti has chosen the furnishings. The materials chosen feature a palette of natural colors, enhanced by touches of blue provided by the fabrics and accessories, standing out against the white walls. The main deck is where you'll find the sleeping areas for the owner and the guests. A full beam suite can be found in the bow, plus four staterooms, but the Beyond series has been designed to be highly adaptable. The yacht bridge deck can accommodate either the master stateroom or a panoramic veranda, and the gym on her lower deck can be replaced with a sixth guest stateroom. As well as this, there's a double accommodation solution for the captain, with a full-size cabin adjacent to the wheelhouse and another very spacious one adjoining the crew quarters. If the captain chooses to use the cabin closest to the wheelhouse, the other one could become a seventh guest stateroom. Another smart solution is the semi-open tender garage on the main deck above the engine room. This has space for a six and a half meter tender, a crew tender and more water toys. Now this configuration provides a much bigger garage than usual. It frees up space in the transom for a beach club with a sauna and it still keeps the tenders out of sight. It also leaves a spacious aft area, which is home to the yacht's beach club, which opens up from the transom when at anchor and is home to a spa, as well as a lounge area. Now it's yet to be confirmed, but it's believed that Goya will be exhibited at the upcoming Cannes Yachting Festival in early September. Last year, the shipyard unveiled the Moto Panfilo 37 meters to much acclaim from visitors and the industry alike. So if you're attending the show, make sure that you stop by and take a look at the first Benetti Beyond 37 meter. 
So the Cannes Yachting Festival is just around the corner and I've been speaking to Benetti about being able to do a walkthrough video on some of their yachts. So if you'd like me to particularly do the Benetti Beyond and if it is at the Cannes Yachting Festival, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to make that happen. And on a final note, I get a lot of messages either by email, direct message on Instagram, all kinds of WhatsApp, all kinds of different ways from people who would love to be a yacht broker and they want advice. I hate the fact that I'm not always able to respond to those messages. Sometimes business and life takes over, so much stuff is happening and I find that I've neglected to reply. So if I've done that with you, I do apologize, but it has motivated me to think that I should use these vlogs to occasionally just give a few tips from the things that I've learned as to what you need to be aware of if you are an aspiring yacht broker. And the message today for any aspiring yacht brokers is that you should remember that this is a business first and a lifestyle second. I've seen so many, particularly young brokers, sometimes not so young, chase after the big listings worth tens of millions of dollars at the exclusion of everything else. The problem with these huge yachts, which are worth sometimes 20, 30, 40, 100 million dollars, is that there's a very, very small pool of buyers for that sized yacht. And if that's all that you're focusing on, you can spend months and months, sometimes over a year, and potentially lose tens of thousands of dollars of your own money chasing after something that's almost impossible to sell. Far better to focus your attention on those smaller bread and butter yachts, the 70, 80, 90 foot sun seekers, Ferretti's, Azimuts, where there's a much bigger pool of buyers for them. And okay, you won't make the big bucks that you'll make on a huge mega yacht, but you'll make something and your business will be sustainable. By the way, that also goes, the principle also applies to very small yachts. Um, sometimes we see yachts uh, which have just been so badly looked after and need so much work doing to them that they become almost unsellable. Or some just have owners who are so difficult to deal with that they will never accept a realistic value for their yacht. If you have a yacht that's worth two million and the owner wants five and he won't take a penny less than four and a half, it's a waste of your time. So the message really is be selective in what you take on to sell, be selective with the people that you work with. And remember, this is your business. It's not just a lifestyle. One other thing, if you enjoy videos about yacht builders, and especially if you enjoy Explore Yachts, then you're going to love the video that I'll be publishing on Friday, because it's about Arxon Explorer Yachts. We actually flew to the Isle of Wight in the United Kingdom to film that, and that will be published this Friday. Last week, we also published a video about a San Lorenzo called Ace, and that's a yacht that's for sale with my colleague, Richard Higgins, while we were with him, we also filmed an interview about another yacht he has for sale called Faribana. Faribana 5 is actually a large 55 meter Amels yacht. So we'll also be publishing that video. So Friday of this week, you've got Arcs and Explore Yachts. Saturday or Sunday is going to be the Amels 55 meter Faribana. Lots to look forward to this week. Don't forget, if you enjoy all this, don't hit the like button, but just tap on it and do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so.